And now, Pastor Dwayne has stepping into a new season. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> you dropped something. I might need that. Let me go. Historically, when I've uh, had other churches and we entered a new year, I always like to do a New Year's message. Uh, resolutions. That's that's you know that's what we do January first. Mine for January first was to survive the New Year's Eve party. I made it. And uh, the two greatest resolutions resolutions that people make is one, I'm going to lose weight. Two, I'm going to grow more hair. So far, I've not been successful, but I keep trying. But we have entered 2023, and we have left a season behind. And we all are entering a new season. This morning, I want you to mentally look around. And this church is different, is in a different season than it was five years ago. This church is in a different season than it was three years ago. This church is in a different season than it was a year ago. We have stepped into a new season. A new year. To everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. We must realize that we serve a God of seasons. It wasn't long ago the wind chill factor was minus 35 degrees. And the next week it was 60 degrees. Welcome to Ohio. Our lives will change as we enter and exit many seasons. But the sun remains constant, as stated in Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and tomorrow and forever. Jesus does not change. We serve a God of seasons. God doesn't measure seasons with clocks or calendars, but through truth, and revelation. Maybe that's why we should read our Bibles and pray. Because those are moments that Jesus, our God, can give us new revelations. Whenever God gives you a fresh word or a new direction, you are about to step in a new season. Just like the morning scripture verse says, To everything there is a season. Every aspect of our life, our lives is a season. There's a purpose for these seasons. There is a reason for these seasons. Be assured, our seasons will change. It wasn't that long ago we was watching TV that was black and white. Remember the albums? Then with great technology we went to 8-tracks. And then with greater technology, we went to cassettes. And then with greater knowledge, uh, technology, we went to DVDs. Now we just put in the computer and, and, and download, I call it dipstick, but I, call it, I guess you call it memory stick. I like to use the word dipstick. And you record anything you want. Just like this morning scripture verse says, to everything there is a season. Every aspect of our lives is a season. There is a purpose and there is a reason. There are reasons that you go through seasons that you've gone through. That you don't know why you had to go through them. But there's a reason for that season. And just because you are going through a rough and difficult seasons, and we all will go through rough and difficult seasons, doesn't mean that God is finished with you yet. Philippians 1.6 reads, Being confident of this, that he began a good work, a good work in you, will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It's just not any old work, it is good work. You just stepped into a new season. 
is not that God wants to confuse us, but we need to be fresh. We need new seasons. This morning we are going to take a glance at the life of one apostle that I believe we all can identify with. I'm talking to Peter. Peter went through many seasons in his life. We go through many seasons in our life. The Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren will go through seasons. And as we look at Peter's life, we will discuss three principles about stepping into a new season like Peter. Principle number one. Stepping in a new season brings new changes. Stepping into a new season will bring new changes. Change is going to happen in your life. Change is going to happen in the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren as part of entering a new season. We look outside the world around us and notice things are different today than 10 years, 5 years, or even a year ago. Things have changed. Look how COVID-19 has changed the world around us. Many churches have changed. But remember, God is the God of seasons. Even in his creation, God created four seasons. And each season is different than the others. Some are meant for things to grow, and other seasons are time to harvest. In some seasons, the days are longer, and other seasons, the nights are longer. Some days, you will have mountaintop experiences with God that shines for a long time. But then there are those seasons that you think the night will never end. And those long seasons when the tears seem to seem like they would never stop. You might stay a little longer in this season than others, but the morning will come, the sun will rise, the tears will cease, and the season of joy will return to your spirit. God gives us revelations and truths to propel us into new and different seasons. Why? Because we are creatures of habit. And if God didn't change things, we will become complacent and stagnant. Churches need to go through seasons. Again, churches need to go through seasons. Or we would become stagnant and complacent. A church cannot grow and enter a new season without change. Matthew 4, 18, 19. Peter entered into a new season when Jesus called him to follow him. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. The question is, when Jesus asked us to follow him, do we follow him? When Jesus asked the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren to follow him, is the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren following Jesus? One day, Peter was just an ordinary fisherman until Jesus came walking by. And when Jesus gave Peter the word, follow me, his life changed. And when we follow Jesus Christ, our lives will change. When the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren follows Jesus, our lives will change as a church. A new season began for Peter. Peter was transformed from a nobody, from a worldly perspective, into a somebody, which is God's perspective. In other words, Jesus was going to make Peter something he wasn't before. That was more than just a change in vocation that happened to Peter. There was an inward change in Peter. <laughs> now, today I'm going to give you a mini Greek lesson. So today, or when you go home this week and somebody says, What did you learn in church Sunday? <coughs> you can say, I learned Greek. So here goes. 
The word make in Greek, so they got make in Greek, can be translated sprout forth. There's your lesson. Make in Greek means to sprout forth. Seeds sprout when planted. Hopefully, when Ray planted his seeds for sweet corn, his goal is to have tall stalks with big ear of corn. But unless you plant the seed, you're not going to have the corn. 1 Corinthians 3.16 reads, I, Paul, have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. We need to either be planter of seeds or we need to be nurturer of seeds. We need to water the seeds. But it is God that gives growth. You know, we would like to be 200 people on a Sunday. We're not quite there yet. But it's in God's timing, not ours. We got to rely on God's timing, God's leading, and God's direction and enter a new season before we will be the new church he wants us to be, to be the new people that he wants us to be, because we should always be changing. You should be different today than you was a year ago, and you should be different today than five or ten years ago. It's called entering a season. I believe there's a miracle in the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren, and there's also a miracle in you. And the seasons in your life have served a purpose. To nurture that seed. And now today you have stepped into a new season. In which that miracle is about to sprout forth. <coughs> when Jesus calls you by name. So he may call Ron or Sue. John, Diane, Doug. He will call you by name. He will call you by name. And the question is. Are you willing to enter your new season? Are you willing to enter your new season? Principle number two. First was, stepping into a new season will bring new changes, but also new challenges. Stepping into a new season will bring changes, but with changes come challenges. There's no doubt that when Peter was called to follow Jesus, he was faced not only with many changes in his life, but also many challenges. His faith was challenged by stepping out of the storm-battered boat to walk on water. His feelings were challenged when one minute he was proclaiming Jesus the Son of God, and the next minute he's being, he's being rebuked by Jesus. His traditions and prejudices were challenged when he followed Jesus into Samaria, in Samaria, the Gentiles. His humility was challenged when the Son of God, the light of the Word, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, lowered himself to a point of a servant when he washed Peter's feet. But in all these instances, Peter's stepped up to the challenge. So the question is, are we stepping up to the challenge that God puts before us? Is the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren ready for the challenges he's going to put before us? However, there is one particular time when it seems that Peter stepped into a season of failure. And he went from a follower of Jesus to one who followed Jesus at a distance. <coughs> and that is exactly what happens to us when we step into a season where it seems as if your life is falling apart, where you can't do nothing right, when the cloud, when the sky is falling. You feel dry and empty, despite your best efforts. You feel as if you've let Jesus down. You begin to believe you are a complete and total failure. You are still trying to follow Jesus, but like Peter, you are following Jesus at a distance. But remember, there's a purpose for every season of life. When Peter didn't know, and many of us today fail to realize that Christ's love is greater than your failures. One more time. Christ's 
love is greater than your failures. As Corey Ten Boom said, there's no pit so deep that God cannot reach deeper still. Peter had a choice. We have a choice. The Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren has a choice. He could have done what many do today to use our failures as an excuse. But that was before he had encountered the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus told him to go to Jerusalem to wait because there was something coming. He told Peter not to leave Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit descended. And there in an upper room, Peter and others began seeking God. So the question is, are we as a church, are we seeking God's guidance? Are we seeking the leading of the Holy Spirit? The Church of Brothers is not big on the Holy Spirit. We just don't talk about the Holy Spirit that much. But you think about it. we got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The Spirit directs us. He guides us. He lets us know when we're doing something we shouldn't be knowing or doing. <clears throat> Having the hearts fixed on one thing and one thing only. They waited it out. They sought it out. They prayed it out. And the Holy Spirit consumed that place. In the same way, the Holy Spirit desires to consume those who gather in one heart and one purpose, who will wait it out, seek it out, and pray it out. So the question is, are we willing to wait it out? Are we willing to pray it out? Are we willing to seek it out? In Acts chapter 2, Peter stepped into a new season. We are stepping into a new season. The very season that we are stepping into 2,000 years later than Peter. Principle number three, stepping into a new season brings new changes, new challenges, and new champions. Peter was transformed from a fisherman into the preacher of all preachers. And I believe those who knew Peter three years before were amazed to see the new champion that he had become. Let me take you back, way back. Think of your high school days. What would your friends that you knew in high school think of you today? What would they think of your life that you're living right now compared to what you was living in high school? I guarantee you this, at my school, those who knew me would have no clue that someday I'd be in front of a church sharing the word of God. I guarantee you that wasn't even in the back of their brain. But God can work miracles. And one thing we must remember, God didn't save us to be chumps. God saved us to be champions. Again, God did not save us to be chumps. God saved us to be champions. So the question is, are you a chump or are you a champion? And I'm confident you all would say, I am a champion for God. God has transformed, uh, transformed us by his power. God is calling his champions to step into a new season. God is calling the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren to step into a new season. We're stepping into a season of power and prosperity. We're stepping into a season where the people of Pittsburgh and our community shall see that we are called by the name of Jesus Christ and we serve a risen Savior. We're stepping into a new season. The Lord is going to open up his treasure chest to bless you. We are going to give and not take. We will, be, we will be the head and not the tail. We will be above and not beneath. We will be the light in this community. So when people see the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren, they will see the light of Jesus Christ. We should be such a church that those in this community who are not church will see the light of the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren and say, what do you guys have? I want part of that. I want to be, be part of that light that you have. We need to be a magnet to the unsaved. 
The question is, is the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren a magnet to the unsaved? Are you a magnet to the unsaved? We are stepping into a new season where God is about to tear back the veil of the heavens. To release, his, to release his blessings on the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren. To release his blessings on each one of us. Those who were once held under are now going to be coming over. Those who were once forgotten are going to be remembered. Those who were depressed will once again be rejoiced. Those who were rejected are now accepted. Those who are downtrodden will have their heads lifted. Those who grieve will have their joy made manifest. Those who were once poor will say, I am rich. Those who were afflicted will once again walk in the light. We are stepping, we are stepping into a new season where those things have been taken from you will be restored. Like Job. I believe I'm talking to those this morning who've been through such seasons. We've had good seasons and we've had challenging seasons. And some of you have had to learn how to praise God all by yourself. You had to praise God through a lot of tears. Some of you had to learn how to lay hands on your head. Some of you had to hold up your hands while you were praying for somebody else, hoping that somebody was praying for you. I want to tell you something this morning. That season, that negative season is over. And we are stepping into a new, wonderful, blessed-filled season. The Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren is stepping into a new season. It's 2023. The new season is upon you. You need to shout with a voice of triumph. Your new season is here. There's a fresh anointing flowing on the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren. There's a fresh anointing flowing on those who attend the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren. We are not chumps, but we are champions for Jesus Christ in the town of Pittsburgh, Ohio, and the community in Dark County Snow. We serve a risen Savior, and we reflect the light of Jesus Christ. Yes, we are champions, but not only should we save it, we should believe it. As I wrap up, wrap up this morning's message, you are about, or you have taken a step into your new season. We're the, what, second week of January now? You have entered your new season. We need to step out in faith. I want the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren to step out in faith. We've never done it that way. We can't do it. We're too small. We're too poor. We serve a God that's got more riches than we can hope for. We serve a God that's omnipotent. There's nothing more powerful, powerful than God. And God says, Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren, I want you to go. Then we should go and not stop and ask questions. God does not want a static church. God wants a dynamic church. So the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren has a choice. Do we want to be a static church for Jesus Christ? Or do we want to be a, a dynamic church for the community and God? We make that decision. So what does a new season mean for us? It means change and transformation. We are not who we were a year ago. And this church is not the same church it was a year ago or five years ago. Are you ready for 2023? Are you ready to have God change and transform you? Are you saying, here I am, Lord, take me. The question is, how will God change and transform us as his people. How will God and change, how will God 
transform and change the Pittsburgh Church of the Brethren. Our new season is about changes, challenges, and champions. And all God's people said, <laughs>